Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly and part three of our Monstrous Review Packet. Um, use your periodic table of electronegativity values to indicate the clarity of following bonds. So I have my handy-dandy electronegativity one, and I'm looking at H, which is 2.20. Oops, 2.20, and F, which is 3.98. Uh, my calculator, 2.2. Minus 3.98 is negative 1.78, which puts me right in the number. Positive, negative, that doesn't matter, but that's going to be polar covalent. So that's a B. Lithium fluoride is 0.98. For lithium, minus 3.98, that's 3. That's my old friend ionic because it's over, it's over 2, 2 or over. C to O carbon is 2.55 minus oxygen, which is 3.44. Well, I don't know that number, but I know it's going to be polar. Minus 3.44 is going to be 0.89. So that's going to be polar covalent. That's a B. I don't know why I circled it. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a single bond or a double bond. It's still going to be the same. So that's what some other trick is. C to H, I told you, memorizes nonpolar, but still it is 2.55 minus hydrogen's 2.20, which is 0.35, which is nonpolar covalent. BP amico 2.04 minus phosphorus, which is 2.19, and that's going to be nonpolar because that's going to be less than 0.4, which is going to be C. S to S E S sulfur is 2.58 minus S E, which is right below it, 2.55. That's almost the same. That's going to be C, nonpolar covalent. Um, metallic would be um, two metals. And then you don't have to look at their electronegativity value. You just do that. All right, use the 3D shapes below to identify the following molecules as polar and nonpolar. So remember, if you have polar bonds, then you do snap. If it is symmetrical, it is nonpolar. If it is asymmetrical, it is polar. So C to CL um, is 2.55 minus chlorine, which is 3.16. So that's polar, so that's nonpolar because it's symmetrical. So I put PB for polar bonds, but it's a nonpolar molecule for that. Okay, S to F, sulfur is 2.58 minus fluorine 3.98. That's 1.4, so I have a polar bond. And this shape right here is asymmetrical, so this is a polar molecule. Again, the circle test, so you find it in the middle. I think that's my favorite for symmetry. Uh, same directions here. Um, I can tell this right away. This is a symmetrical shape. So that means it's going to be a nonpolar molecule, um, even if I don't check the bond polarity. So again, I've got a nonpolar shape. So that's going to be a nonpolar molecule. This right here, if I circle this dude, the center of it is right here, so it's a polar shape, and then uh, that means I got to check the bond polarity. Nitrogen, 3.04 minus hydrogen, 2.20, and that is 0.84. So that's a polar molecule. This is A. C's the H, as I told you. If you see that, you know right away it's going to be nonpolar. That's B. P to H, this looks like a polar shape. Let's check if I got polar bonds. P is 2.19 minus H, which is 2.20, which is 0.01. So it's a nonpolar bond. So that means it's a nonpolar molecule, which is B. Ah! S, it's got a shape that could be polar. Here's the center. Oops. It's got a shape that could be polar. Uh, let's see if that's got polar bonds. Sulfur is 2.58 minus oxygen, 3.44. 2.58 minus 
2.58 minus 3.44 is 0.86. So this is a polar dude, which would be A. I believe A was polar. A is polar. All right. So now if I have the strongest type of intermolecular force, remember, if it's nonpolar, it's dispersion. If it's polar, it's dipole-dipole. And but I gotta watch out for my old friend H bonding. So if it's polar, I gotta look out for that H bond. Okay. So hopefully, well, I've got these on here. So what I'm gonna do first is anything that's nonpolar, um, which is B, anything that's nonpolar is gonna be dispersion. So 134 is dispersion, 134, 136, 137, uh, 139, I already forgot. 134. 136, 137, 139, and 140. Whoops. 136. One thirty nine. And then one forty. Those are all dispersions. So everything else is gonna be dipole dipole unless I see some H bonding in there. Now the only one that looks like H bonding to me, remember it's got to be N O or F is 139. So that means everything else is going to be dipole dipole except for 139. 130 dipole dipole. And then 139. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, looks like I need to check my answers again. So let's see here. That's what happens when it starts stringing it along here. So let's make sure we should have, we should have dispersion and for 134. So dispersion, dipole, dipole. 134, dispersion, dipole, dipole. Good. 136 should be dispersion, dispersion, Hydrogen bond. Whoops, what, what number was that again? 136. Dispersion, dispersion, hydrogen bond. Good. So 140 is dispersion, and 141 dispersion, and then that was dipole, dipole. That was a lot. Draw a loose dot structure for sickle and state how many bonds and lone pairs it has. So I'll draw it up here. Sickle is SI with one, two, three. I'm going to draw it neater than that. SI has four valence electrons. Chlorine has seven. It's going to look like this with the dots around it. Now I want to remind you the lone pairs that we refer to are only lone pairs on the central atom. And I picked sickle here because I didn't want you to be foolish and think that that was a dot that mattered, an electron pair, and it's not. But it has four bonds and zero pairs, and that's 149. Draw SF4, see how many bonds and lone pairs it has. So, I mean, I can give myself much room on here, but you weren't supposed to do it on here. Um, what SF4 looks like is this, F, 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 with a pair, okay? So you start off with sulfur and you've got uh, two lone pairs left over. Hey, my dog's here. Hi, dog. Um, and that would be four bonds and one pair. And that would be seesaw. BRF3. Ooh, that one I actually don't know off the top of my head. I need some space to draw BRF3. So let me do it right here. BR has seven. And F3. F3. This is a pair, this is a pair, another F, right, another one, oops, I'll make another BR, but it's an F. Okay, and then I have two electrons here. I'm going to pick them up and make a pair. So I have three bonds and two pairs. So BRF3 has three bonds and two pairs. Draw the Lewis dot structure for ALF3. ALF3, remember aluminum's a weird duck where it um, only needs six electrons to be happy. 
and it's going to look like this. And it's just draw your dots, connect the dots. La la la, connect the dots. La la. Try to lose dot structure for CO2 and how many lone pairs it has there. Let's take a look at CO2. Uh, I like CO2. It's one of my faves because it is simple and forms a double bond. Connect the dots. I'm going to move these two and make a pair, another double bond out of it. I'm going to move this one and this one and make a pair again. So it has how many bonds it has. This is called one bond, and this is one bond. So together that is two bonds and no pairs on the central atom. Okay. All right, periodic table time. Neon, 3S1. So I'm going to the third row, S block, first one. Sodium. What element is 2s2, 2p6? Second row, all I care about is the last one. Second row, p block, 6. Second row, p block. Last one is neon. Ooh, that one's even highlighted weird. So 5s2, 4d1. 5s2, 4d1. Why? I don't know. <laughs> what best describes the image to the left? So right here, I see myself an element. Right here, I see myself a diatomic element. I already know it's a mixture. Right here, I see myself a compound. Now, this is not evenly mixed. Heterogeneous mixture, um, not all samples the same. What best describes this? This is one type of particle. That's a compound. What best describes the image on the left? I have a single dot and I have a diatomic. That is a mixture. That's heterogeneous. And not all samples are the same. So what's this? This only has one type of deal. One particle. And that's going to be an element. Which of the following is false in regards to a compound? Um, a compound does not have a blend of properties. Um, it does have more than one type of element. Every sample is the same because it's pure. Elements and compounds do have every sample being the same. It does have chemical bonds. Elements don't have to have chemical bonds, but they might. Um, what best describes a compound? One type of particle, but more than one type of atom bonded together. One type of particle and one type of atom. No, that wouldn't be a compound. That would be an element. More than one type of particle. That's a mixture. So I'm done there. If CSO4 form a double replacement reaction, what do we precipitate? Yes, the sulfate rule. Sulfates are soluble, except calcium is one of those exceptions. If Na2SO4 formed, would we precipitate? No, sodiums are always soluble. MgNO3, would we precipitate? No, nitrates are always soluble. If KF formed a double replacement reaction, would it be a precipitate? K is always soluble. No. Why does N form N minus 3? So whenever we have um, nitrogen, it always forms N negative 3. So why do ions form? They form to fill their valent shell. Okay. Why does Na form Na positive? It fills its valent shell. But remember, this is losing. So I was looking to see in case it had a choice of empties its valent shell. Emptying the valence is the same thing as filling the outer one, so just kind of be aware of that. Why does F form F negative 1? Again, it fills its valence shell. Here we go. What are the products of the reaction above? Aluminum and silver are going to try and replace each other. Aluminum is above silver on the activity series, so it's going to happen. I'm going to have ALNO3 taken three times plus silver. Check your charges. BaOH taken twice plus HNO3. I'm going to get BaNO3 taken twice plus HOH, which is water. What are the products of the reaction above? Um, notice I had to check my charges. Barium nitrate and water. Oops, I didn't mean to make that too so big, but I did. AU plus FeCl3. Fe is here. Gold is here. Because gold is lower, oh, it's sad and no reaction. 
Oh, look, I know this one. It's combustion. CO2 plus H2O. How do I know it's combustion? Ch something and O2. Na3PO4 plus AgNO3. I'm looking at double replacement again. I got NaNO3. The charges are plus one, minus one, so that's good. Plus Ag3PO4. And Y plus one, minus three. Okay, remember I'd erase those, but this reaction happens because this is a solid, this is aqueous, all sodiums are soluble, uh, phosphates are insoluble if you're not group one. So Ag3PO4 and NaNO3. Oh, look, a little synthesis. Let's bump them together. Calcium oxide, calcium is plus two, oxygen is minus two, so no subgroups. In the compound Na3PO4, the sodium part of the compound, it's Na positive. That's a monatomic cation. Positive. Compound Na3PO4 was the phosphate part. Hey, PO4 has multiple parts. That's polyatomic. It's negative. It's an anion. In the compound NH4, uh, I lost my minus three. In the compound NH42S, What's the ammonium part? Well, NH4 is plus one, so it's polyatomic cation. Uh, what is the sulfur part? Sulfur part is just one element, so it's monatomic. It's negative two, so it's an anion. All right, so if two things end in NS1, that means it could be 1S1, 2S1, 3S1. They're going to be in the same family. Which elements would be more closely related? So we know the ones that are more closely related are the same family. So I've got 2P3 and 5P3 and 3P3. So the ones that would be most closely related would be even closer. So 2P and 3P are more closely related. So we've got helium and argon. Helium and argon. What about the atomic structure of magnesium and strontium would tell you they're in the same family? Ending electron configuration tells you they're in the same family. What element is this? It ends in ooh, S1, D5. S1, D5 means that really that's like S2, D4. Oh, that was a tricky one. So it's four. So one, two, three, four. That's chromium. Right. What element is this? 2P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2P, 4. Second row, P block, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. Oxygen's the fourth one in the P. Looking at 3P, looking at a filled 3P, third row is argon with a P6. When looking for elements, I'm going to draw a quick little periodic table here. We've drawn periodic tables with a bunch of stuff. This is S1. This is S2. I'm not going to do the Ds, although it works for them too. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is P1, P2, P3, P4. Ah, it doesn't look like a P. P5, P6. We're looking for elements to substitute with the same properties. How would you find the substitute? Remember, you want it in the same family. So if you want to be in the same family, you want to look above or below. It's multiple choice. Above is the only choice of the above or below. Okay. Why does HCN have a higher boiling point than CH4? It's got to have stronger forces, but why would it have stronger forces? Let's see here. This right here is nonpolar because it's all C's and H's. This guy right here, if I drew him out, that's asymmetrical. That's a polar bond. So HCN has stronger intermolecular forces and dipole dipole. Give the formula for, I guess that should be say the name, for CrOH, that's chromium-6 hydroxide. This 6 tells me the charge because hydroxide is minus 1. Give the name of Cu2S. This one's very often missed. S is negative 2. So that means if I have a 2 for a subscript here, this would have to be plus 1. So it's copper one sulfide. NO3, I just want to make sure that you know this. It has no charge. If it doesn't have a charge, it is not nitrate, right? It is not negative one. 
So it's two non-metal, so I use prefixes. Nitrogen trioxide. MgNO3 starts with a metal, so I'm not going to use prefixes. Magnesium nitrite. Magnesium nitrite. And it's that because nitrate is NO3. All right, non-metals, prefix time. So it's going to be phosphorus, got three bromines, tribromide. Manganese, two sulfite. So that means MN is going to be plus two. Sulfite, I've memorized my ions to be SO3 minus two. MnSO3. Formula for ammonium sulfate. Ammonium NH4 positive, sulfate SO4 negative 2. Got to throw a 2 around there and not leave ions on there. NH4 2SO4, NH4 2SO4 is B. Sulfur hexafluoride, I'm hearing prefixes, so I just do what it says. Sulfur is 1 sulfur, hexafluoride is 6 of those. Carbon monoxide, I knew that one from before. Whoa, just got a little mussed up, didn't it? But it is E. Dinitrogen, that's N2. Trioxide, that's O3. That's D. Silicon dioxide. Silicon means one silicon. Dioxide means O2. Boom. All right, 202. Carbon, I, okay, carbon. Um, remember, there's no such thing as Cl. So carbon and four iodines. That's carbon tetra iodide or carbon yep it's got to end in ide why does boron have a greater ionization energy than beryllium well are we always talking about attraction and size that's why it would be greater so boron is on the right of beryllium so it has more protons so it's on the right it's smaller it has more protons why does Na have a greater ionization energy than Cs? Well, Na, again, would be smaller and more attractive because it's smaller. Na is smaller and more attractive. 205, why is chlorine smaller than Na? Na is here. Cl is way down here. It has more protons. And that pulls in the electrons more. Boom. What is the atomic mass of hafting? Okay, out of 100, every 100 atoms, this is what you wanted to see. Out of every 100 atoms, um, 5 have a mass of 176, 19 have a mass of 177. So what we're going to do is the for formula is percentage 1 whoops, times mass 1 plus percentage 2 times mass 2. And I'm going to keep going, but I have to make sure that my percentage is in the decimal form. So I have 5 out of 100 would be 5%, so 0.05 times 176 plus 19 out of 100, 0.19, have a mass of 177. I got one more here. Um, 27, oh, I got more than 27, geez. Ah! So 27 out of 100 is plus 0.27, um, 178. I gotta go to the next line. Plus 14.14, 179. Wow, that's a lot. Plus 0.35 times 180. And then I put all that in my calculator and I get, uh oh, and I get, uh, let's see here. 0.05 times 176 plus, now I'm going to parenthesis this guy, um, 0.19 times 177, close parentheses, plus parentheses, 0.27 times 178, close parentheses, plus parentheses, 0.14 times 179, close parentheses, plus parentheses, 0.35 times 180, close parentheses, hopefully I get something at 178.55, eh, close enough, right? We know it's going to be the decimal form, so 178 is not there, okay? So there we go.
And what I did, I cheated a little bit. I just wrote down what the average mass was from the periodic table. So it should be close to that. Okay, I got the atomic mass of lithium, which has two isotopes of the following atomic masses and abundances. So U is just another unit for mass. So we're looking at 0 0.073. Ah, I parentheses too quickly. Times uh, 6.017 plus 0.927 times 7.018. And that's going to be 6.94. What element does calcium plus two's electron configuration match? Well, calcium has 20 electrons, but calcium plus two would have to subtract two electrons. That's going to be 18, which is argon. What element does F minus one's electron configuration match? Well, F has nine, and the F minus one would have to add one, which is going to be 10, and 10 is my old friend neon. So remember, when you're figuring out how many, you do the opposite of what the charge is to figure out how many electrons you have. All right, metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Um, what type of element has luster? Metals. What type of element conducts electricity and is dull? Conducts electricity is metallic, dull is non-metallic, that's metalloid. What type of element does not conduct electricity and is brittle? Those are both non-metals. What type of element is malleable and conducts as a solid? Those are both metals. What are the missing coefficients? Oh, man. Okay. So I've got two aluminums on the left. I need two aluminums on the right. Boom. I've got three sulfates on the left. I need three sulfates on the right. Boom. I've got one potassium on the left. I've got six on the right. I gotta drop in a six. So that'll work. I got six hydroxides. I got six hydroxides. Hey, that's it. So I got one, six, two, three. One, six, two, three. There you go. What are the missing coefficients for this one? Uh, chromium's one, chromium's one. Uh, iron is one, iron's one. Nitrate is two, nitrate is three. Okay, so I gotta go for the smallest number two and three fit into. So I'll put a three here. That gives me six nitrates. I'll put a two here. This gives me three irons. This two gives me two chromiums. Two three three two two three three two. Let's see. All right, and then we get the bonus ones. What plus three ion ends in P six? One two. So it's going to have ten electrons. P two P six ends in ten electrons. So if it's plus three, that means it had to have lost three. So it started with thirteen electrons. That's my old friend. Ah, aluminum plus three. What minus two um, ion ends in four P6? So we go to the fourth row, one, two, three, four, and I look at P6, and that's 36. That's chromium. So if you're minus two, that means you had 34, gain two electrons. 34 is selenium, and make it have the right ion name, and it's selenide. What part of the periodic table is represented by P2? So that means, I showed this a second ago, that's the carbon family because it's the P1 and then P2, and this is boron, this is carbon. What part of the periodic table is represented by S2? That's the second column in the S block. So alkali metals and alkaline earth. Are you torturing my dog? Mora, don't, you're making her mad. She's like, come sit by us. Just call her, she'll come. What part of the periodic table is represented by D2? So D2 is the titanium column. And the titanium column is the transition metals. All right. What part of the periodic table is represented by F2? F2 is all the way down there. That's like the praseodymium part, number 59. And that's the inner transition metals. Which electrons react chemically? Remember, reactions take place with the valence electrons. Which electrons are considered valence electrons? Only your outer S and P. Why do we draw only valence electrons in Lewis dot structures? Those are the ones that bond. Valence electrons exist. Only valence electrons are in shells. Only valence electrons form bonds. Uh, which end is the negative end of a P to H bond? So P, electronegativity is 2.19 minus 2.20. 
this is a nonpolar bond. If it's nonpolar, neither end is positive and neither end is negative. What is the negative end of an N to F bond? N is 3.04 and fluorine is 3.98. That is a polar bond and fluorine is the negative end. Which atom has the arrow point at it in a polarity arrow? So remember if I had N to F, whoops. I sometimes you see it with this arrow in the middle and it points at the more electronegative one. It would point towards fluorine, um, the ones with the largest electronegativity. When the polarity arrow points at that atom, that atom is not fully anything, just partially negative. Why is that structure bent? I've got four, well, that's a weird circle. I got four regions. So four regions is based on tetrahedral, which looks like this, and there's no uh, straight bonds in there. So it has four regions of negativity, that's it. Which the following would have the same 3D structure as the Lewis dot structure shown. So this is this one, which have the same structure. So this is bent. Uh, wait, wait, oh, Lewis dot, that's the one up above, which the following has the same 3D structure as Lewis dot structure shown. I think this is missing something because I don't see the Lewis dot structure that I've shown. So that's trouble. So 230, I'm not sure. This is, this is bent. This is trig planar. I guess there's label these. Planar. This is linear, because there's only two spots. And this is tetrahedral. Oh man, I don't know what the question's supposed to be. Which is following the same 3D structures loose? I forgot my loose dot, probably. Why do metals conduct electricity as solids? So remember, electricity is a flow of ions. So they have ions that can flow. Why don't covalent compounds act as solids? I'm sorry, conduct as solids. Conductivity is a flow of ions. And guess what? They ain't got no ions. They, have ions. they ain't got no ions. Why do ionic compounds conduct when aqueous? Well, they have ions that can flow. They have ions locked in place. They have ions that can flow. Mm -hmm. What two factors determine ionic bond strength? So remember, bond strength is bond energy, is charges over size and remember charge matters more so really you'll see it as q1 q2 over radius squared and q's are the charges and size is the radius so what two factors determine bond strength size and nuclear charge that'll work um which is stronger caf or naf remember charge matters more Plus two minus one plus one minus one. Bigger charges win. If you're looking at a fight, who do you bet on? The stronger person. You don't always win that way, but it's a good idea. Which is stronger? Plus two minus two or plus one minus one. Stronger charges. Which is stronger? Plus two minus one plus two minus one. Uh oh. Now I get to look at the size. So fluorine's the same for both of them. And beryllium is above magnesium. So beryllium is smaller. So that means I'd be dividing by a smaller one. So smaller means you're stronger. Remember, shorter bonds are stronger. Which is stronger, SO or CAO? Trick question. I trick you. I trick you. <laughs> this is covalent. This is ionic. Ionic always wins out of ionic and covalent. What makes ionic compounds brittle? When particle shift attraction increases, no. Nope. When particle shift, ions are repelling. So remember we had a positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and it's set up where they would be next to each other. Uh, ah, come on, erase. Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And remember, this is three-dimensional, so if this shifts even a little bit the likelihood of anything being messed up so if i if this guy right here uh oh can i move my oh i almost can uh oh so i'm in trouble now so um if this guy right here shifts even a little and becomes negative positive negative positive there's enough repulsion that it's going to happen 
So why are they brittle? They shift and the ions start repelling. Why are metallic substances malleable? Um, because they have those electrons that are free flowing, they can reform their bonds. When particles shift, bonds reform easily. That might have been the end. It is. Woohoo! You saw this took me a while. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me show you this last part. I know I did. And I hope it leads you to an A plus 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 on the final. Good luck plus on your final. Doodles.